Hey, this is Sam from Sure. In this video, I don't want to do as much of a tutorial, but really more I want to discuss uh, scan data and how it can be used in the frequency coordination tab to generate exclusions to inform the calculator. One really cool thing about wireless workbench is that it can connect to live uh, network Sure devices and capture scans directly from them and import them into the software. The data looks really cool, and it can be neat to see the spectrum, which is otherwise invisible to the human eye, uh, but it serves a much deeper purpose in Wireless Workbench, and that is to generate exclusions. When we calculate frequencies in Wireless Workbench, uh, if you're familiar with intermodulation products and all these other considerations, one of the big goals of the calculator is to make sure that the frequencies we choose for our systems do not interfere with one another. And that's a really important thing. Uh, but there's another key aspect of frequency coordination, which is to ensure that the frequencies you find don't interfere with the environment around you. Now, there are a lot of ways to define uh, your RF environment, and most of them are uh, listed right here in the Spectrum tab in Wireless Workbench. Um, you can say which TV stations are operating near you, or arbitrarily avoid certain ranges, or arbitrarily choose to use certain ranges. That's what these tools are. But scan data is a unique uh, and probably one of the best ways to classify your environment. A quick scan informs Wireless Workbench exactly what it is that the antennas of your receiver system, if you choose to configure it that way, exactly what they're hearing. Or if you want to scan with additional omnidirectional antennas, you can listen to the world around you and get a worst case scenario of what the RF spectrum near you looks like. So when you get this data into Workbench, as I've sh uh, shown right now, I've just loaded a file, but we could have just as easily captured one. These thresholds in the coordination plot are actually processing the data. And what I mean by that is they are taking the scan data and based on the th uh, placement of the red and the orange threshold, uh, using that data to inform the calculator where would be a good and where would be a bad place to put a particular frequency. Let's break these thresholds down for a second. The red one is called the exclusion threshold. And if I zoom in, you'll see uh, I can actually move this threshold by hand or just use these controls right here. As I move this threshold, those blue halo bars appear only where the scan data goes above that threshold. Basically, this threshold says what noise, if any noise goes above that line, uh, the red line, don't put any frequencies there the next time the calculator calculates frequencies. So it's a really good way to set the threshold for pain as to what's too noisy for my systems. The orange line is the scan peak threshold, and it's a little bit more complicated. If a scan goes above that line, we're not only going to avoid that spectrum, but we're actually going to assume an active transmitter is there, like a handheld or a body pack, maybe from another system that isn't our own. And the important differentiation there is we're not just going to avoid the spectrum where that carrier is, but we're going to uh, assign it some uh, generic spacings, like a channel-to-channel -channel spacing and channel-to-intermod spacings, so that the calculator doesn't put any frequencies too close to this frequency. We're actually going to protect this carrier, even though it might not have been in the, our original coordination. And this, uh, what this thing does is, is pretty significant. It makes Wireless Workbench a friendly neighbor when it comes to frequency coordination. If you capture really loud carriers in the spectrum such that they exceed this ex uh, scan peak threshold, the frequencies that Workbench calculates will not violate that frequency. It's a really important thing. So what I want to show you is um, all these blue bars and, and rhombus peaks uh, that are detected are shown visually on the coordination plot, but if you go to the additional exclusions dialog, this table shows the exact same data. It's just in a tabular format, but you'll notice all of these range and single exclusions correspond exactly to the detected scan peaks and ranges uh, that are in the coordination plot from our loaded scan. Um, if you had multiple scans, you can always load them and choose to apply or unapply any of these scans just with this checkbox, but I'm going to leave this one applied, and what I want to show you is when I calculate frequencies, let me scroll down here to the G band, I want you to notice where all the, uh, the frequency markers for my Axiant Digital systems go, that those are just some frequencies that I've loaded here. You'll notice that all of the frequencies fall in these gaps where the blue bars are not, and this is a visual demonstration of the exclusions working in real time. So I'll close right there, but I just want to uh, highlight the fact that exclusions uh, and the automatic generation of exclusions with scan data is really a powerful feature of Wireless Workbench, and it's where scan data really comes alive to get the best frequencies for your systems. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. If you've got any questions or comments, be sure to comment down below, and uh, let us know if you like this video with a thumbs up. Thanks.